yesterday, I believe somebody mentioned it in the comments in regards to this thing called Icebreaker with Quant. So we're going to jump into that here briefly. Um, and shout out to the one and only Greg Lunt. He says, Breaking the Bank for International Settlements has completed Project Icebreaker, which is a cross-border, cross-DLT test for retail CBDCs. Now, granted, okay, you know, for those who want proof and so on, Greg is stating that he's 95% sure the project was built using Quant and Overleisure. Again, part of any research is to, you know, connect the dots, if you will. Um, but he does outline seven particular reasons why that is. Um, hold on a second. Let me see. Oh, it's a photo. Okay, cool. Maybe that it is in regards to um, uh, Flux. But anyway, yes. So he's pretty sure 95% of the projects use Quant and Overleisure, um, or I should say this project. Uh, here's the seven reasons why this is a particular thread. We will jump into this. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, this comes, of course, originally from the Bank of International S uh, Settlements. And check this out, right? So you have um, this original statement. It says, with icebreakers, hub and spoke models, CBDCs can be used for cross-border payments. Keep in mind, this is on March 6th. So was that like literally yesterday, right? So uh, they could be used for cross-border payments without leaving their own systems. The foreign transfer is broken down into two domestic payments facilitated by a foreign exchange provider active in both ends. And this quote comes from Cecilia Skingsley, who is the head of the Bank of International Settlements um, Innovation Hub. Um, and she states, quote, Project Icebreaker is unique in its proposition. It first allows central banks to have almost full uh, anonymity in designing autonomy, excuse me, in designing a domestic retail CBDC, then it provides a model for the same CBDC to be used in international payments. Uh, one of our community members, Frankie, responded, you know, good stuff. Any quant link here? Um, you know, of course, nobody has, a, you know, the direct link. But here's some more particular examples uh, that Greg had. We're going to get into that. Um, I'm going to highlight this. It says, number one, it used a hub and spoke model just like quant. We're going to highlight that. So look what it says right here, you know, and this is really great research from Greg. So again, shout out to him, follow him. I mean, he's he's killing it with the quant coverage. So here's the highlights, right? It says Project Icebreaker explored a hub and spoke solution interlinking domestic systems through a technical platform that facilitates communication between uh, our CBDC systems. Think about it. What's the key takeaway? Technical platform. That platform, in my opinion, is overledger right so it says each rcbdc system needs only to integrate with one external system the icebreaker hub rather than integrating with every other individual cbdc system the advantage of this model is that it can scale hear me out i know a lot of people can say scale but it again kept connecting the dots right the plat the technical platform overledger scaling who is able to scale like nobody's business Bonds over ledger. So anyway, scale up to support many participating systems without increasing the complexity of the design. Perfect example of that, three lines of code. Another perfect example of that, blockchain agnostic, right? And then another perfect example of that is interoperability across the board. Let's get a little bit more into this. So here's Gilbert Verdia. This guy, you know, ran a person named Mario. It says, I meant from a, you know, topology perspective, and Gilbert responds, center, hub, and spoke. Um, and then on top of that, let's see here. We'll go further down. Here's point number two of the seven. And don't worry, we'll get back in the comments too. But it says, it use standardized APIs for interoperability just like Quant. And, of course, the highlight, the communication via the icebreaker hub is enabled by APIs, which let it interoperate in a standardized way with each POC and RCBDC system. When we get further into this particular outline, there's a little bit more here, and it gets better and better and better. I already reviewed this a while back, actually yesterday. It says it used hashed time lock contracts, which is HTLC, just like Quant. That's the key takeaway here, in my opinion, which pounds at home that it is Quant. Blow this up. 
the icebreaker model makes a minimal set of technical requirements about the RCBDC systems that connect it uh, connect to it, namely that, and here's a few bullet points. Each must be a functioning payment system and operate in real time or near real time, ideally 24 7, 365 days a year, right? No kidding. Each can implement and support the use of HTLC. Very, very crucial. On top of that, number four, three more to go. It used gateways for cross network communication, just like Quant. It has to be quant because look at the multiple gateways quant definitely already has when we go into this further each domestic rcbdc system can connect to the hub in two ways each having different effects some of which are uh, out of the project scope but look what it says on the bottom key highlight the second is the domestic rcbdc system provides a gateway to serve as a single communication channel between the domestic rcbdc system and the hub all right, a little bit more. Remember yesterday, if you were watching, we were talking about the whole thing with JP Morgan and Quorum, right? So how about this? It connects Quorum, BESU, and Corda just like Quant. The project focused on core features only, including the technical solution for the Icebreaker Hub, the integration of the three POC RCBDC systems of Israel, which is through Ethereum, Quorum, uh, Norway, Hyperledger, BESU, and even Sweden with what? Corda. And the technical validation of a limited set of key use cases together with related policy considerations. If you're still not convinced, how about this? One of the participants, the Swedish Central Bank, uses Oracle for their mission critical infrastructure and is likely already using Overledger. How can that be? It's like what you see right here. This is originally printed from the uh, Oracle site. It states the risk, uh, Rix Bank establishes total control of license uses with what? Over, uh, Overledger. Um, excuse me, Oracle. Sorry. Look at the highlight. We use Oracle products for our mission critical systems almost exclusively. We already drew that connection in the past. On top of that, when we go over here, this picture particular person ask over Verdian, are we in some way involved with the e -crona? Very good question. His response, we've had meetings with Oracle regarding the Swedish Central Bank. Aha, that's not part of the five we already are talking to. All right. And the last and final one, the icing on the cake. Number seven, we've made countless connections between quant and be the Bank of International Settlements in the past. Yes, we have. I even done it in countless deep dives. It seems like Overledger is their de facto solution for all cross-border CBDC testing. Now, I will state this. I'm on board for the most part with Greg Lund's statement. However, when it comes to a de facto solution for all cross-border CBDC testing, don't quite 100% am on board on that. Why? You have to consider what? You have to consider Cypherium because we understand um, where a lot of people feel as though there is that particular connection with the Bank of International Settlements. And if anything, they have used the, the term the de facto solution. So I do want to throw that into the mix. But here it is. And it says uh, forwarded from Go Verdian, we're close to those policymakers, including the Bank of International Settlements. And I get that, but I just also want to throw in, I don't think it's 100% like what you see. You have to throw in Cypherium. Um, and then on top of that, look at this. They're looking for both domestic and cross-border. We cover both use cases and capabilities and have been talking to the central banks. They have BIS and policymakers. We are helping shape the landscape for CBDCs. And yes, they totally are. You know, Teaming up with MIT, uh, teaming up with the New York Fed, teaming up um, not just with, you know, what they got going on with the Digital Pound Foundation, but, you know, having um, talks with or, you know, working with um, the Prime Minister of the UK dating back to, was it over 10 years ago, with some of the background that they have, uh, Gilbert Verdi and the Prime Minister of the UK. So all those connections are definitely there. 
Um, so anyway, I definitely wanted to point that out. I did. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is a big deal? Or um, if anything, you just think this is a, a positive catalyst that makes you know some significant news. Glad to bring it to you guys. Again, please follow Greg Lunt if you have a Twitter account. Great content creator. Currently at uh, close to 18,000 followers, and it just really does a great job. He also lives in the Phoenix area, like myself. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have not yet subscribed, do yourself a favor and subscribe for more information on the ISO 222 compliant tokens, and hit the notification bell to make sure that you are aware of the new videos when they come up. Max and I cover these ISOs, and we also have a live show every single night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you tune in for that. You won't want to miss it. Thanks again, and we will see you on the next video.